Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. Hi, I'm Ed Zinda, and this is What the Funk. What the Funk? So in this video, we're going to talk about the subject of identity. How do you prove that you are who you say you are? If I'm going to a bar, I may be asked for my driver's license to prove that I'm over 21. If I'm traveling to another country, I may be asked for my passport to prove that I am Ed Zinda and that I'm in fact a US citizen. Now to get those two documents, I would probably go to some government institution and provide some other form of identification, like my social security card or my birth certificate. And each one of these documents makes a claim about myself. So my driver's license claims that I'm over 21 or I am the age that is on the, the driver's license. My passport claims that I am Edmund Zinda, that I am a US citizen and that I was born wherever and on a certain date. My social security card claims that I have a social security number. My birth certificate claims that I was born on a certain date and a certain location. So when you really break it down, identity is just a collection of claims. And a single claim can actually be made up of other claims. So traditionally we rely on large institutions like the government or large corporations to provide identity for people. But recently with the advent of blockchain and decentralization technologies, we no longer have to rely on these large institutions or corporations. We're moving closer and closer to a point where anybody can verify a person's identity reliably and trustfully. So we're gonna look at managing and verifying identity on the Ethereum blockchain. Specifically, we're gonna look at two different standards. ERC-725 and ERC-735. These two standards are still works in progress and being openly discussed, but they're the closest thing we have to managing identity on Ethereum right now. ERC-725 is a standard for smart contracts that manage identity. This standard is broken up into three parts. Keys, execution, and claims. When we talk about keys, we're talking about public and private keys. Ethereum already has public key encryption built in. So when you're using something like your Ethereum wallet, you already have a public and private key to sign transactions and run various actions on the blockchain. So in this case, keys deal with transactions, performing actions, and also specifically dealing with identity, you can also sign claims. When we talk about execution, we're talking about this identity smart contract running as a proxy for you when you're executing other smart contracts on the blockchain. This identity smart contract can also issue claims for other identity smart contracts. Now let's talk about claims. Even though claims are actually stored on an ERC-725 smart contract, there's another standard that's been introduced just to deal with managing claims, and that's ERC-735. So the ERC-735 standard states that claims can be added by anybody, but they also need approval. Once a claim has been issued, they can't be changed without permission, but they can be removed. Claims will always contain the signature of whoever issued them, and they'll also contain a reference, like a hash. Typically, storing a bunch of data on the blockchain is frowned upon, but storing references to something on the blockchain is much easier, and you can actually store large bits of data somewhere else. So after somebody has implemented these two standards, how does this work in the real world? So let's take the example of me going into the club. So I get to the front of the line and I'm greeted by a bouncer. The bouncer needs to verify that I'm over 21 to enter the club. So the bouncer could pull out his, his device and generate a QR code with a random string. I pull up my smartphone with an Ethereum wallet application and scan the code. My device will then sign that string along with the address of my identity smart contract and send it back to the bouncer. The bouncer's device can then call a get claim method on my identity contract. You can then check the claim, verify the signature of the issuer, then look at the issuer's identity, and then check to make sure that that claim still exists with that issuer. Then check with the issuer to make sure that that claim is still valid. If everything checks out, I'm admitted into the club. In the next few videos, we're gonna look at ERC-725 and ERC-735 and start to implement them in Solidity. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked this video, hit that like button. If you'd like to see more of my videos, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you can be notified whenever I post new content. Also, if you like travel videos and sweet videography, you might want to check out my other YouTube channel. So go ahead and click on that link after this video. Again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.